everyone. Welcome to my Velvet Effect workshop. In this workshop, I'm going to show you all the tips, tricks, and techniques you can use to create a velvet effect on your client's nails. I really hope you enjoy it, so let's get started. So in this workshop, I'm going to be teaching you how to create the flocked velvet effect on a nail with gel polish and acrylic powder, okay? So this one is half and half. So we've got shiny and then we've got the velvet effect. This one is like a Harlequin design. So I'm just gonna take it off so you guys can see a little bit closer. So we've got the flocked effect to create the diamonds of the harlequin then we've got the shiny lines and then the crystals just to finish that off okay and then on this one the orange one we have created a circle effect in the flock with the shiny diagonal okay so the first thing I'm going to do is show you the um, green nail which is half and half so I have done two coats of gel polish and I have used the Fairy Garden Apple Blossom from the Nailchemy range okay and I'm just going to pop a no wipe top coat because I want the contrast of the velvet effect against a shiny other half of the side so I'm using my no wipe top coat just go over the whole nail, you don't have to just do half, to go over the whole nail and I'm gonna pop that in the lamp for a full cure. So while that's in the lamp for a full cure, I'm just going to get my other two nails ready. So I have used on this nail, the Onyx from the Nailchemy range, which is their black. And again, I'm gonna use the No Wipe top coat on that one. Obviously, if we were doing this on a client, we will have done our base coat and our two coats of gel polish. And again, on this one, I've used the papaya from the Nailchemy range. And again, I'm using the No Wipe. Got a little bit of fluff in there. I'm using the No Wipe top coat. So that's all of my nails prepared. And obviously, if you were doing this on a client, you will have got to this stage on all 10 nails, okay? Again, I'm gonna pop that in the lamp for a full cure. So my apple blossom nail has now fully cured, okay? And we are going to create that half and half design. So in order to get a nice crisp line, what I'm going to do is use some of this striping tape, okay? Now, I'm not a massive fan of striping tape. It's a little bit old school, but it's great to be able to create nice crisp lines on a velvet design. So I'm just pulling that down either side, making sure, I'm just gonna cut that off, making sure that it is nice and central. If it's not, lift it back up and place it back down. Okay, and now I'm gonna rub over that and make sure that it's nice and fully adhered to the nail. So I'm just using my finger here, but you could go in with the silicone tool and do that as well. So I'm gonna go back in with my apple blossom so this is the same colour as the base as to what I've used. And I'm just going to paint down one side of that nail. Now, don't worry too much if you go over your striping tape, because you can go in with a nail art brush with a little bit of gel wipe off solution and just tidy that up as best as you can. We don't want to seal in that striping tape too much. So I'm just making sure I've got a nice even coat of polish on that side of the nail. So I'm just gonna pop that to one side a second. 
and I am getting my clear acrylic so I have a clear acrylic here this is just a generic brand it's not an expensive brand I tend not to use my expensive brands to be able to do the velvet effect um, because we don't need to worry about the lasting and the adhesion and everything else and I have got quite a shallow pot here now if we were doing this on a client we would need to decant this out of the larger pot into a smaller pot maybe a dappen dish or something like that because we don't want cross contamination but because we're working on a tip we don't have to worry about doing that today so I've just got another tip okay which is what I use as my scoop and I'm holding this over my pot and I'm just going to pour my clear acrylic powder on top of that area that we have just painted with our gel polish so you need to make sure that you've got a nice even amount of the acrylic powder on that area because we don't want it to be an uneven velvet effect making sure as well that we include that side. Now you can see the product starts to swell, okay? That means that it's absorbing that acrylic powder and it's going to create that flocked effect or velvet effect. So making sure that it's nice and even and now I'm gonna pop that in the lamp for a full cure, leaving our striping tape on. So the gel polish is a 30 second cure but I always like to do it for 60 because we have got that acrylic powder in there, okay? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my black nail out of the lamp and we are going to create that cushioned harlequin effect. So again, I'm going to use my striping tape <clears throat> and this is where it can get a little bit fiddly but the effect is amazing so you need to bear with it okay so I'm going to go from corner to corner and pop my striping tape down okay I'm just going to cut that off and you want to be able to leave these edges don't be tempted to cut it too close to the nail so before I push that down and make it nice and secure I'm going to do the rest of my striping tape. So what I want to do with this one is make sure that this is in the center point of the nail, but I also need a nice even line so that there's an even gap between these two. And cut that one off. And again, get my striping tape, making sure that this one is in the center and take that down off the side of the nail and again just cut that off so at this point you want to make sure that your striping tape is all nice and even okay so I'm just going to go in and adjust it where necessary And now I'm happy with those, I'm going to push them down all the way to the edge of the nail and make sure that they're well adhered to the nail. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go diagonally across that. So again, getting my striping tape. And we want to go from corner corner so we're going from here to here and again cutting that off we don't want to fix it down just yet because we need to make sure that they're nice and straight where we put them and then we are going to go from that center point here to here. And 
and then again I'm just going to turn that round go from this center point to here and again cut that off so looking at this nail we need to make sure that this point this point so this point this point and this point are even this point and this point are even this point and this point are even and this point and this point are even okay and we need to adjust our striping tape as we see fit so this one needs to come down slightly those two points aren't quite even so I'm just gonna pop that one back on and then making sure that these three points in the center are even so what we've done is we've created a large diamond with a cross basically through it so I'm just going to push those down again you can use your finger or you can use your silicone tool it's entirely up to you okay so before I complete this nail I'm just going to grab my <clears throat> apple blossom nail out of the lamp because that has now cured and what I do to dust off, you can use a dusting brush or you can use a stiff nail brush. It's entirely up to you, okay? But I use an old gel brush. So this is what I use for my glitter application. It's really, it's nice and stiff, but as you can see, it's well used. I use it for lots of different things and it's the perfect stiffness to be able to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is dust off quite lightly my um, shiny side okay so you can see that stayed shiny because we had cured it now what I'm going to do I'm going to go into my velvet side and give it a really good scrub and get rid of any of that acrylic powder residue okay now before I move on and take off my striping tape I'm just going to tidy up that edge because what's happened is the product has swelled and it's created an uneven edge. So always make sure on your client's free edge that you do that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove my striping tape. And it has given us a really nice crisp line between our velvet effect and our shiny top coat. So what you could do along this line, you could put a new piece of striping tape, you could pop on some crystals, you can do whatever you want with that. But you can create any sort of geometric design with your striping tape and create a really nice crisp line with that. Alternatively, you could do the whole nail. So if you wanted to do the whole nail in the velvet effect, you just literally paint on like we did this side, you paint on your gel polish and then you put on your acrylic powder over the entire nail and then you would cure it and then you would have a whole nail as the velvet effect but I just wanted to show you the difference between the velvet and the shiny okay so our black nail okay what I'm now going to do I've popped a little bit of the onyx already onto my palette all right, and I'm gonna go in with my Crystal Nails Phantom Brush. So the reason I'm using this brush is because it holds a nice amount of product, but it's also got a nice pointy tip, which is what we need for this design. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna work on half a nail at a time. So I'm gonna do this section first, and I'm gonna use my floating technique so hopefully you guys will have seen the mediums and brush techniques workshops that are available on YouTube and also in the announcement section on my main workshop group page on Facebook. So if you haven't already, hop on over to that video and you'll understand what I mean by the floating technique. So I'm just going in, doing 
doing my outline I'm going as close as I possibly can to that um, striping tape but trying my hardest not to go over it okay so this is just the onyx it's a normal gel polish so you are going to get an element of spread so you need to work quite quickly which is why I am doing half the nail and then the other half to try and limit the amount of spread that happens with our gel polish the nail can be range isn't too bad for that but you don't want it to spread too much so we're doing a nice even layer of our gel polish going as close to that striping tape as we can like with the um, apple blossom nail it doesn't matter too much if you go over the striping tape a little bit but you certainly don't want to go over the entirety of that because if we do the flocking or the velvet effect on top then it will set that striping tape in onto the nail and we really don't want that we want to be able to peel it off so again using my floating technique making sure I go down and keep those points nice and crisp which is why I'm using this brush because it's got a nice point you can see there going up into the corners of my diamonds and then I'm just going to do that little one there so that's that half of my Harlequin design done. So I'm just going to grab again my acrylic powder and I'm going to scoop that and pop it on the half of the nail. It doesn't matter if you go over to the other half because we will be dusting it off. Doing a nice even coat and then I'm going to turn so don't be tempted to dip the nail if you dip the nail it's going to distort our painting and those lines so and it almost squashes the gel polish you literally want to dust it over pour it over being careful not to touch it as we're doing that because you will cause a dent so that the gel polish can just absorb that acrylic powder okay so I'm not going to bother tapping it off too much but you can see there the difference already so this has started to swell which is what we want because it means it's absorbing that acrylic powder and I'm going to pop it in for a full cure okay so that has had a full cure now and what I'm going to do again I'm going to get my dusting brush and I'm just going to dust over that side that we want to paint okay I'm just going to move my acrylic powder to one side and I'm going to do exactly the same again on the other side of the nail so again using my floating technique taking it out to those points on the nail up to that point now this design can seem quite time consuming but you wouldn't be doing this on every nail of your client so this would be classed as your nail art or your accent nail okay so you could do different flocking techniques like the half and half or a French flock or whatever you want to do or just plain and shiny on the rest of the nails and then this one would be your accent nail so it's not too time consuming if you are only doing one nail it's only like doing nail art so again pulling that product down because we want a nice even coverage we don't want uneven 
coverage on this otherwise our flock will be uneven or our velvet effect will be uneven you almost get like globules of matte and we don't want that so I'm just working down the nail filling in those diamonds or half diamonds <clears throat> making sure we've got a nice even coverage right up to those points and then back down again now I just need to do this one on this edge Okay, so again I'm going to grab my acrylic powder which is the clear and pop that on, nice even dusting. You can see it's starting to swell and you want to keep going with this so when you know it's done is when the sw you get an even colouring. So obviously when we put our gel polish on, it's shiny. So as we're putting our clear acrylic on, you can see the difference in the color. So when it stops going shiny, that's when it's absorbed all of the acrylic powder that it can absorb. And that's when we know it's done. So I'm just going to tap that off, okay, so you can see there's no shiny parts in there now. And again, I'm going to pop that in for a full cure. So while that's curing, I'm just going to get my crystals ready. So I'm using my Crystal Katana from Crystal Parade. This is the old style Katana. The new Katanas are black and they are called the Ninja Katanas. Okay, but I've got my well-loved, well-used Crystal Katana, as you can see from the tip. I have got a new tip, but I don't want to use it yet. <laughs> um, and I am using some clear crystals you can use whatever color crystals you want it's entirely up to you i'm just using the clear because i think they really complement the black and the shiny and the velvet effect and these crystals are an ss5 okay so it's going to be these ones here that i'm using and to adhere my crystals to the nail i'm going to be using the nalchemy crystal totalis so the reason i'm using this is because it's just an incredible gem glue okay um and it's nice and thick it comes in a massive 20 mil pot and it holds pointy backs flat backs caviar beads all different shape sizes of crystals this will do the job okay because it comes in a pot I am going to decant a small amount I don't need a lot with my silicone tool okay and I'm going to pop that on my palette because I don't want this pot to be sat out I have got the windows and doors open today so I don't want that to set so I've got my dusting brush and I am going to dust over the entirety of that design and get rid of any of that residue and you can be really quite rough with this okay so that has removed any of the excess acrylic powder so now what I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to remove my striping tape. So you can see we have now got a shiny line in between our flocking. So again, I'm just going to go up through. Don't be tempted to remove them all in one go. We want to remove them one at a time. Okay, so I'm just going to show you nice and close up. So 
So you can see we have got our triangles. If I pop it that way, you guys can see a bit better. We have got our triangles cushioned Harlequin effect, and we've got nice, crisp, shiny lines going down through that to create that difference in texture across the nail. So what I'm going to do now on each um, cross section, so for example here, 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 here and here, I am going to be putting my SS5 crystals. So to do that I'm going to use a dotting tool and I'm just going to pick up, preferably with no fluff on it, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my crystal totalis and I'm going to pop it where I want my crystals. So you can see this product is really quite thick. So I'm literally just touching and then bringing up in like a swirly motion to get rid of that tendril product because we don't want that going across our design because it will show and we don't want any adhesive showing. So I'm just popping a tiny dot of product of my Crystal Totalis from Nailkami into all the intersections of where I want my crystals. So if I hold that like that, you can see I've got that little dot of product on each intersection. Okay, so I'm now going to use my katana to pick up my crystals and I'm going to pop them, do the middle one first, on my intersection. And this is why, I mean you don't have to do this with the crystals, you can just leave it shiny, but this is why when we were placing our striping tape, we had to make sure that those cross sections were even. Because if we went to go and put crystals on it and our crystals weren't even, it would throw the whole design out. You have to make sure that your striping tape and the cross sections are correct. So I'm just making sure that my crystals are all even. So this is even, these two are even. Just need to pop that one out slightly and then I'm using the end of my katana to push those crystals down into that crystal totalis and what that does is it sort of sits in the product okay so that they're nice and secure so I'm just going to pop this one down slightly there we go. And that's going to go into the lamp for a full cure. So I've got an LED lamp and that is 60 seconds for the Crystal Totalis. Okay, so I'm now going to move on to my orange nail while that one is curing. Now, I've had a lot of questions on my workshop group as to how this is created. Now, I've done lots of different ways of trying to create this without it looking messy. Um, and the best way is to use a dotting tool, basically. So I'm going to go in and we're going to do this on a diagonal. So I'm going to go in with my papaya and again you could do this straight across the nail you can do it as a full nail you could do it half and half it's entirely up to you but I just wanted to create it on a diagonal just to create a slightly different look okay so I've painted my nail and I'm going to go in with my acrylic powder so again like the other nails this is going to swell which is what we want it to do making sure we've got a nice even coverage of our acrylic again making sure we go down the side we don't want to miss that area off And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create some circles. So I'm going to tap that off 
but we don't want to tap it all off it doesn't have to be completely seamless and I'm not going to use the round end of my dotting tool I'm actually going to use the pointy end and the reason I'm using the pointy end is because it creates a sharper finish so the first I haven't cured this okay and the first thing I'm going to do is pop in my bigger dots so I'm going to go in here and what I'm doing is I'm pushing that product out okay and away and making sure that we've created a nice even round circle and then I'm going to do a larger one here so again being quite firm I'm pushing that product out removing any excess product off of my dotting tool as we go I'm going to do a larger one here okay and I'm going to do a larger one here and you could do any shape with this you could do hearts you could do whatever you want with it okay and you have to have your dotting tool don't have it at an angle you need to have it straight down onto the nail all right so now I'm going to create some smaller dots so again going straight down onto the nail and pushing that product away from itself and do one here Now, don't make the mistake of putting that straight in the lamp because what we've done is we've pushed out that product and we've created a gel polish area that hasn't got any acrylic powder on. So I'm going to go back in with my acrylic powder and I'm going to concentrate on filling in those dots basically. Okay, because that's what helps to create a nice crisp line for our dots. Because we've exposed gel polish that doesn't have any acrylic powder on. So what I'm going to do now is just tidy that up again. So I'm going to go back into my dots and just basically make sure that they're nice and crisp don't at this stage worry about the unevenness on top of your flocking because we'll sort that out once it's cured just concentrate on getting those dots or circles nice and evenly rounded okay so now I'm going to pop that in for a full cure so that one has my black now has now come out of the lamp I'm just going to go in with a file and just tidy up that little bit there on the edge and that is complete so our crystal totalis I'm just going to take it off of there so you guys can see a little bit better so our crystal totalis has set our crystals and we have got that definition between our shiny lines and our matte harlequin effects so it's created a cushion effect this looks beautiful as well on a red um, so for valentines and things like that it looks really really pretty but like I say, you don't have to add those crystals, but I think it almost looks like a cushioned um, couch or sofa. So that has completed our cushioned nail. So our dot design has now come out from a full cure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dust off that excess 
acrylic powder and I'm now going to dust off my circles. So because we pushed that product away, and I'm really hoping you guys can see this, we have created almost like a crater and we don't want that. We don't want this ridge here. It's not attractive, okay? And it's really quite rough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in with a soft grit file. Um, this one is a 200, okay? But it's not a buffer, it's a file. So it's slightly stronger. And I'm gonna go over, because this is now set, we can do this. I'm going to file over my circles, being sure not to touch my shiny side, okay? We are just concentrating this to where we have put our circles and getting rid of that ridge and making it a nice even surface. Don't be scared to file this. It's got acrylic powder in it. It is also completely cured, okay? So we need to keep filing until I mean, I'm not using a lot of pressure at all, but we just need to keep filing until we've got a nice even surface over our circles. Okay. So again, I'm going to dust that off, making sure I get into those circles. Remove any of that residual dust, and I've actually finished this off with a little bit of striping tape. So I wanted to create a little bit more interest to this. So I'm going to go in again with my silver striping tape, I'm going to go along that line. This is a really nice summery nail because those circles actually look a little bit like coral. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with my dotting tool and I'm just going to push that striping tape down onto the nail so it's nice and secure. I'm going to trim off the excess. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with my uh, no wipe top coat. And I'm just going to secure that striping tape in there. Like I say, you don't have to do this, but it just helps to finish off the design I think by using the striping tape you could put crystals down it or you could just leave it like we have done our apple blossom it's entirely up to you so I'm going to pop that in for a full cure now again which is 60 seconds so that completes our velvet effect nails. So we have got our, let me just get rid of that one and that one. So we have got our half and half on our green. We have got our Harlequin cushioned effect and we have also got our circular round coral effect bubble sort of design so I'm just going to wait for that to focus so you guys can see maybe if I pop them there we go so we have got our half and half so our flocked and our shiny our cushion design and our circles. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this workshop. Like always, 
make sure you click the like and subscribe button to keep up to date with all of my workshops and that is how to create the velvet effect flock design in different colorways different design techniques really simple but so so effective I really hope you've enjoyed this workshop and if you did please make sure you click the like button and if you want to see any future workshop make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you all so much and I'll see you all soon.